Hey Vlog, Mike here with Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the test bench. Today I'm going to be testing out some Citadel Color Contrast Paint, specifically Contrast Shyish Purple. I'm also going to be demonstrating something I've learned about Citadel's technical contrast medium. My first impression when I opened the Shyish Purple is that it's basically black. Let me just show you here. When you look at this pot, purple isn't really what jumps to mind, black is. I'm just going to do a quick little test spot on this gaunt here. Now I didn't layer it on very thickly there, that was a very very thin glaze, and it's still quite dark. Whereas if I actually put a second coat on, it'll go almost to black. So if you're picking that up expecting a deep purple, this is probably deeper than you want. So this is where the technical contrast medium comes in. And now you could take this medium and thin some of the contrast, shyish purple, on a palette or a piece of plastic card or whatever, and then apply it. But you can also just really cheat. What I mean by that is I'm going to take this medium, I'm going to just add some of it to the model here. So I'm just going to kind of come around this inside edge of this bit of the carapace. And so it's just got some of the medium just sitting there. Now what I'm going to do is take the shyish purple. I'm going to start at the outside edge. So it's pretty dark there. But as we come to where I've applied that medium, it's now getting lighter. Point where in here I'm getting almost no color from it at all. So again, I'm just gonna kind of work around that outside edge, and as I work closer to the middle, where more and more that medium starts to pick up, the color just almost just stops coming off the brush. Now I can come back in and add a little more color in. But you can see that is significantly lighter than this back area where the shyish purple is applied straight. And in fact, it's even a very different tone. This has, you know, more of a cool purple to it, whereas this is practically just slightly off black. Now what I want to try here is taking this, I haven't done this myself yet, is just taking a little bit of the medium and working it back over this. So you can see it almost works like an eraser. I can start to blot away some of the uh, purple. So I think as long as the uh, I think as long as the contrast paint hasn't set, you can come in with the medium and start to play with it. So I think that sort of technique is going to become very important to doing things like smoke effects or fire effects, but also things like Tyranid Carapace. Now, I was kind of meaning to do a High Fleet Leviathan look there, but I kind of went backwards with the fade. So what I'm going to do now instead is just try it on this next piece of carapace here. So I'm going to start with the medium on this outside edge. So covering roughly half the plate. And just a little bit just over that shoulder as well. So I've got a nice empty spot in the middle. I'm going to grab a little bit of the shyish. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way outwards kind of diagonally. Again, just a little more shyish on the brush. Start in the middle where there's none of the medium and work back and forth towards that outside edge. So 
Now, it's not perfect by any means. Um, you know, it's not the same effect you'd get from a, you know, very well controlled manually painted High Fleet Leviathan. But I don't think anyone's really expecting that from a contrast paint. At least not from Shy Purple. Now, there are other purples in the contrast range, and I don't have all of them on hand. So I can't say maybe there's one that's actually just really, really well suited to this, and I'm just using the wrong color. Here, I'm bringing just another coat in here. Just testing how things kind of layer up. And again, we'll just kind of do the opposite here. So nice and dark towards the middle. And then just feather it out at this edge. Now that's more, this middle section right here is more of a sort of classic High Fleet Leviathan look. You know, dark in the middle. And then brush it out, right? Now the question is whether I've actually saved any time or not, and I don't quite know. But I definitely see some good practical applications you can get out of that. So it's been a couple hours and this model is now completely dry, so I want to just come back and review it with a fresh set of eyes. So this is where I was trying to do the High Fleet Leviathan look with Shyish Purple. And so this was just straight Shyish Purple. This was Shyish Purple feathered with the Citadel Medium at the outside. This was Shyish Purple Feather with the Citadel Medium on the inside. And I don't love any of it. Um, this color to me is a little bit too dark. And now this could be because these are very, very smooth surfaces. And a lot of the contrast paints tend to work better with a lot of different areas of detail to grab onto. And so a large flat surface like this maybe is the worst way to test a Citadel contrast paint. But at the same time, I was doing the High Fleet Kraken. I didn't have any complaints about how the red went on here. And again, no, you did get deeper shadows sort of on the head where there's more of these little delineations. Whereas it's a little more plain back here, but compared to this, this is basically just, you know, off black. And it's kind of not super useful. Um, there are certainly going to be ways to use this color, but I think plating, you know, a Tyranid Warrior or a Tyranid Gaunt with it, whatever, is probably not where Shyish Purple is going to live. I can't really see using this with a Space Marine either because I think it's just so dark that it you almost don't get the contrast effect out of it. It's almost just tinting too much. And so I sort of feel like as a contrast paint goes, this one's, this is a pass. This isn't doing much for me. There's probably some really amazing way to use it, probably in combination with another contrast paint, and we're just not seeing it yet. And that's going to come out in the following weeks with experimentation, and we're not there yet. But hopefully, you know, as a painting community, we kind of start to develop these recipes and the way these different colors interact. And maybe Shyish Purple just is too pigmented and needs to be thinned down before you even use it. Like maybe I should be taking this into a palette, mixing it right up with some medium before it even touches a model. Maybe that's the way to go. And in fact, having said that out loud, let's try that right now. I'm just going to take a spare little base here, just because it was the closest thing I could find. I'm just going to put a little bit of Shyish Purple in it. Maybe like two brush loads. Rinse that brush. Rinse it really well. I'm going to take just a little bit of the Tiss Citadel Technical Medium. I'm going to lay it adjacent. I'm going to make sure we have roughly 50-50, and I'm just going to blend that together. So now, this is 50-50. This may actually end up being too light. I'm not quite sure yet. You know, the mixing ratios for contrast paints are still something we're learning about. So I'm going to do this last panel up here. Okay, so that's already behaving more like the other contrast paints are. That is much better. I'm going to do his uh, head here as well. Yeah. So I'm feeling like maybe Shyish Purple is just... You know, almost just too pigmented in the pot. It needs to be reined in just a little bit. Because that 
would make a pretty convincing High Fleet Leviathan. I might even lean a little bit less away from 50-50, maybe a little bit more Shyish Purple, but we can just kind of blot that in. That looks great to me now. Whereas everything back here I kind of hated, that's probably perfect. Let's, you know what, let's just hit up some other armor panels here, see how we feel about it. Now the sort of maybe downside here is that this purple, so right now we've got a base coat of Wraithbone and that's actually really close to the skin tone that you would normally use on High Fleet Leviathan anyway. Um, the difference is the purple is such a stark contrast. Ah, contrast. You know, it really, really shows when you make a mistake and get a little bit of purple on the skin tone. Whereas when we're doing High Fleet Kraken, you know, if a little bit of the red gets in the skin tone or a little bit of the skin tone gets in the red, specifically that way, the red covered the skin so well that it didn't even matter if they interacted. Um, whereas this one, obviously you have to be maybe a little bit more careful as you're applying it. And so if you were to try and pick a High Fleet to paint very, very, very quickly, like if you're trying to get ready for a tournament that's tomorrow, I would definitely pick High Fleet Kraken over High Fleet Leviathan. Simply because you have to be more careful putting this purple on so that the white is preserved. Oops, and there, I just made a mistake and got my finger in some wet paint. That's another thing, just with contrast paints in general. Um, putting the model down and letting a paint dry is going to be paramount. Now, you're probably going to be mostly batch painting with these, but it was really, really easy to get purple all over my fingers and then get it elsewhere on the model. So it's kind of important that you, uh, you know, let a paint dry before you handle the rest of the model. But that there, the mostly thin down shyish purple is much closer to what we'd want for a High Fleet Leviathan. I'm much happier with that. Hey, if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new videos. You can also join me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evenings at 8.30 p.m. Eastern for live painting and sculpting shows. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps cover the cost of paint, models, and all my video production gear, but more importantly, it helps keep food in my kid's belly and a roof over his head. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers, both past and present. Your ongoing support and encouragement is really what makes this possible. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.